Welcome to the Word for Winners. I'm Tom Anderson, my lovely wife. Maureen. And, and we're, we're excited about being with you today. Yeah, just we're talking about the life of grace. And life of grace. And we had gotten a revelation and a call of grace on our life to spread grace all over the world and go to the nations, his church with grace and truth. And so uh, so we're here to, to to present to you the life of grace, of revelation of it that God 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 gave us. So so God right. had my husband write the book, Maximizing the Life of Grace, which is a powerful book to help you find that revelation of grace. So many of us are trying to uh, live a life of grace, but we have one foot in the life of grace and another foot in under the legalistic rule of the old covenant, and it doesn't work. You can't put new wine in old wineskins. That's it, what that was about. Yeah, it doesn't work. It'll just it just explode, and, and everything is ruined. And so, so anyway, so here we are to teach you what the life of grace is and how to die to that old covenant because you can't live under the old covenant and the new covenant don't work. And so the old covenant is now obsolete, yes. and we're now in what Christ has done. That's what grace is, what Christ has done. So I really encourage you to go to the Word for Winners, and there you will find our material, but you can purchase the book, the Maximizing the Life of Grace, or the one that God uh, gave me to write, uh, God's Grace Will Fill Your Passion. And it's also a workbook with the workbook, so you can do a Bible study or Ooh, you can yeah. just do your own study uh, with the, the Life of Grace. They so should do that. So just really encourage you to do that. And then go to our YouTube so you can hear more of our messages. We are on television all over the world. But on our YouTube, you can, you can uh, hear our messages. Go to Maureen Anderson my YouTube, or uh, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson, and then like, subscribe, and share. So really encourage you in that. You'll really like that. Uh, as I'm going through my book on gra the grace today, we're going to yes. go through that. And on chapter two, we're going to be uh, talking about, uh, you know, the life of grace is being, is being led by the Holy Spirit. And, and so some of the things that are so important to us about grace, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, uh, 26 says the power of sin is the law. Yes. The law is your human effort. So when I'm trying to do uh, my, with my hu hu human effort, the old covenant, I, I don't have the power. That's why God uh, uh, sent the, the new covenant because the old covenant, uh, uh, we can't do it. It's what we do, our human effort, and we're not able to be good enough. And so it was given to us to show us we needed uh, Christ Jesus, our Messiah, and what he has done. And so it says when you try to live it under your own human effort of running your race, uh, the power of the sin is, is in that because you continuously, uh, you know, just like this. Tell us, when sir. I was a teenager, I, would, I was trying to watch my weight and I'd go on a diet. And, oh, I'd have like four great days. But the fifth day, you know, the law, you don't have the power. So what So what do you do? You, I became a glutton that day, and I ate everything in sight. And so because you can't, the law brings the curse, and that's what it does. And so It really increases cur sin. I mean, yeah. it just seems to. Yeah. yeah, that's what it says in Romans 6.14 says this. And these scriptures are important for us to understand important. why you have to die to the law so that you can be in the life of grace, what Christ has done. You have to die to your own human efforts and take on the efforts of Christ Jesus and believe them and receive them that they might work through your life, the new covenant. Yes. It's already done. And so it says this, it says, for sin shall not be not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So what is that yes. saying to us? That when I put myself under my own human efforts, the law, is that it says that sin will have will be my master, That's will run saying. my life, will rule my life. But when I put myself under what Christ has done, grace, the power of him, uh, sin has no power over me. That's it, exactly. And, and now I live the victorious life of, of God, uh, that Jesus provided for me. That one particular scripture that you use, yep. that when you 
try to live by grace and try to live by the law. The Bible yeah. say, the, you've got a scripture that says, don't have intercourse with the law. Oh, yeah, that's Romans chapter 7. In other words, you don't seven. enter into it Verse because four. if you do, you just put Christ back on the cross. He didn't pay enough, and now you feel like you have to do. So grace is connected to... Uh, grace is he did, law is we do. Yeah, that's right. That is the key to grace. Grace is something that God has given to us to make sure we are fully qualified oh my for goodness. all of the good things of God 24-7 right here on earth. When we receive what Christ has done, it's already ours inside of Thank us. You. Well, then it, it activates the power of that grace that has super... Uh, natural power in yes. it, and it activates it, and it causes us to run the race uh, with with success, with success in our life, and obtain what He's already given us. And so it does the work through us. Like Paul said, I work harder than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God is what's propelling me to to go forth and and. A, 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 and achieve what, what Christ has already given me. Say that again, because they, they don't understand. Sometimes we're not saved by works, but we're saved to work. And some people don't but understand the works what Paul is just this, said though. there. The works is this, that yes. he says, I am his workmanship to be created in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, in Christ. to do the good works that he already prepared for me. There you go. So it means he's already done that. You know, God's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and then he begins. So in the kingdom of God, God's already in his heart. That's what it says in Ephesians. I think it's, I know it's chapter 1, maybe 9 or 11, something She's like that. She's my concordance. Yeah, yeah. But it says that, that he's in his heart, he's already accomplished at the plans that God has for us. So wow. it isn't me on my own trying to accomplish it. Human effort, that's the law. But now it is me receiving yes. and believing he has good. and allowing that belief to now let that grace, that that's work, good. what Christ has already done, work, work through my life to produce after it's kind. It's like this, okay? God says, you know, Jesus is the vine and you are the branch. Branch is just dead there. But yeah. when the vine goes through the branch, because it has to go through the branch, there is life there. Food. You're not producing the fruit. The vine in you is producing the Come fruit on. That's through a good word. you. Ooh, All Christ together in you. you the hope of glory. Ooh. And so this is what it says here. This is in my book. It says that the grace of God, what Christ has already done. You have to go back and always say that. It's what Christ has done. He's done the work. He hung on the cross. He paid the price in full. He said it is finished. He fulfilled the law. And he went to hell for you. Come on. And he resurrected. And in that resurrection, he made blood covenant now that he already fulfilled the law. He fully obeyed God. So all the blessings are ours now because of his works. And... And and all the promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus because he did it all so we could live a blessed life. And so it says here, the grace of God, which what Christ has done, binds us to the blessings of God that are working in us. The law, what we do, binds us to the curse. Amen. Wow. Whoa. I don't want to live under a don't curse. Don't want to live under that. No, no, and, no. But the enemy is a legalist. So he constantly is talking to us, trying to get us into our good works, Ooh. trying to be to do and do and do. And, uh, and so he gets us under that curse. And how does he do that except constantly try to throw condemnation at us yes. for missing the mark. Yes. So he's the one that makes you feel condemned. As soon as you feel condemned, the word's not working for you. No. Nope. Because only faith works. Yeah. Fear will never work. No. Nope. And we have to understand grace gives us the power and ability. It's a voice that speaks. It's a voice. It says he yes. teaches us. Teaches voice that's teaching, mentoring us to say no giving us that power and ability to say no to sin, ungodliness, and worldly passions. It's so powerful in our life. It takes all the desire and all the power out of sin, gets you free from addictions, and living that life 
of the divine nature of God. And it says, you know, doesn't it? Through yeah. his great and precious promises, promises, we take on his divine nature now. Oh, there we go. So Back I to connect the... to all those things. And in that, I escape the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. And it, oh, my gosh. All of his goodness flows through his yes. names to yes. quicken our mortal body yes. that we might actually behave goodly on this earth. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what grace truth. does. That's the truth. That's the I, ha truth. I want to read this out okay. of the Galatians, out of the TPT Bible, unless you want to reach it, read it. No, that's okay. You go ahead. You're doing good. I'm, I want to share something about Egypt and somewhere down the line. Galatians yeah. 3, 5 says it's out of the TPT. And he's saying this to, to the, the church in Galatian because they had gotten back under the law and they were trying to mix the law with grace. And he said, you can't do that. It, it's, it, it's confusion. It won't work. And so he said this, let me ask you again, what does the, what does the lavish supply of the Holy Spirit in your life and the miracles of God, tremendous power have to do with you keeping religious laws? The whole, it said, well, what does that have to do with that? He says, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us through what? The revelation and the power of faith. That's how it's done. It. It's, yes. not, you know, it's not by your human effort. It's okay. by you believing what Christ has done and having the revelation of what he has done that now allows that outpouring of the Holy Ghost on your life. Abraham, our, our father of faith, believed God, and it was the substance of his faith released God's righteousness to him. So the true children of Abraham had the same faith as their father. We have that faith. Awesome. And the scriptures prophesy that on the basis of the faith of God, you would declare uh, us as righteous to God announced the good news already at the time of Abraham. So that is through, through your example of faith, all nations will be blessed. So when we step into the life of faith, not what I yes. do, but what Christ has done, uh, I'm, I'm in, I'm righteous before God. And so the blessings of Abraham's faith is now our blessings too. They're ours. Because of that that's right. faith. That's right. So that's how the blessings right. come, by your faith. But faith is in the Word. Jesus began our faith, and he finishes it. So, and he's the Word. So when I hear the Word, I have great faith. I have his faith. And so faith cometh by hearing the Word. Word and of hearing God, it. yes. Okay, it goes on to say, but if you rely on the works of keeping the law for salvation, you uh, you're live under the law's curse. Right. For it is written clearly, it goes on to say, utterly cursed is everyone who fails to practice every detail and requirement of the written law. It is obvious that no one achieves the righteousness of God by attempting to keep the law, for it is written, the one who is, is, is right uh, relationship with God will live by faith. faith. By faith. By his faith. But keeping the law does not require faith, but self-effort. There it is, what you do. And the law teaches, you know, you practice the principles of the law. You must fo follow all of it in detail. You can't miss it. Yet Christ paid. This is what you have to hear. This, this is, is what grace is. This is what grace is. Christ paid the full price to set us free. Set free means you, you've been cut free of all severs and ties to the law. Set you free from the curse of the law. Not under a curse. He and he price. absorbed the curse. He absorbed, he absorbed the, the curse. curse completely as he became a curse in our place. For it's written, everyone that hangs on the tree it, it, it is cursed. And teach and grace did that. He hung on the tree. And so now, or the cross, now the blessings are mine because of what he did, not because of what I do. There. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting in that we see grace show up for specific people, as we mentioned in the last show, that it showed up for Noah, showed up for Abraham, showed up for David, showed up for Job. Yeah, There's a number of places where grace showed up as individual God lent for specific purposes. But now, I once we're that, born again, it's lent to everyone that's born again, this grace, fully paid price that Jesus took care of for yeah. us. But I, what I feel like here is like Job. 
he finally realized he needed a redeemer. Yes. He couldn't keep the law. I think every single one of them came to that place. They needed a they, 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 oh, they wanted, did in their own lives. Yes. They wanted the revelation of grace because they couldn't do the law. I mean, Mo Moses blew it. He killed somebody, had to run to the desert. And so there was that needing the grace of God. Uh, Moses was a type of Christ that God sent to Egypt to set the people free. Yeah. Now they did not deserve freedom, just as we did not deserve freedom. Okay. We, but okay. he sent them to set them free by the power of grace. Oh, the blood the of grace Jesus. Of the, blood of Jesus. the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. Now there were the 10 plagues, but it was the 10th plague. Yeah, because the, the ten the plagues could, plague. the, 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 the nine plagues could not set could them free, cannot set them free from the curse and deliver them All from their slavery. All examples of the natural, yes, yes, and yes. She showed it, but then the tenth one. The supernatural blood of the lamb Picture that they were to go into their house and they were, this is, this is the, Egypt, the Israelites, and they were to eat and consume all of the lamb Christ except Jesus. for the fat to be burned, which yeah. is the, the actually the infectious part, yeah, okay. don't eat, and that the blood was applied, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, top, right, and left, Father, uh, on the doorpost, so that the enemy would not take the firstborn. Firstborn is where the inheritance comes. Now we are firstborn of the grave. Where yeah. Jesus, where we now become firstborn every time we get born again. Yeah. But they were set free not because they deserved it. They nope. were set free by the grace and the love of God. And the picture is there for us to see that when we get set free, we don't deserve it. No. We don't deserve it for the price that Jesus paid. No. But he set them free by the power of his love and grace and wanted to take Jesus, them, yeah. wanted to take them to the promised land. And we have to To see, the promises of God. Yeah. That's where he wants to take all of us because yeah. of grace. We're fully qualified for all of his goodness. Yes, and we're in the kingdom. And yes. that was a picture of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. But it's really interesting, too, that... It was the blood. The power is in the blood. Blood. Power and that, was in the blood. And the power the is in the blood in our life. The blood covenant. Detours the enemy. The Father God, that covenant of blood. And But they left the, the, the world and its system with the wealth of the world. And that's what we leave when we get born again. The wealth of the world is ours. They don't Given to us, we have to, by faith, receive it and uh, ask for it. Ask and for so it. we need and to ask for not. that wealth. That's ours. Hallelujah. And there was none sick among them. And so th th this is what, there's a picture of the power of the blood. The power the of the blood, blood of Christ that produced Jesus the grace. Christ, the lamb. And, and then produces the promised land, but they couldn't receive the promised land. But you know, when you enter into the promised land, we have to understand that there's a picture there. That Christ Jesus now were born again, but in the promised land there was giants. And so, though our old man is dead and gone now, we're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus, that our spirit is born again, new, has everything I need in it, that the old man that's gone left junk behind. And so, we have to allow the Holy Spirit now to get the giants out of our soul. And our soul is our mind, the two minds, the conscious mind, the subconscious yes. mind, the will, and the emotions in our life. And so that's what the Holy Spirit is there. And he takes us, you know, it's like we're on a journey that we've never been before. Oh, that's the truth. And he knows, the Holy Spirit knows the journey. He's the spirit of truth and he wants to guide you into all truth. And so he's the leader, you're not it. And you know, your emotions demand to be leaders and you have to let the emotions know, no, you're not the leader. The Holy Spirit is the leader. And so you have to see that, you know, he knows the journey where you're going and you allow him to take you on that journey. Just like if you went to Africa and you're going to the jungles, you don't know where to go, but you hire a guide that knows the journey. That's exactly and right. And that's what the Holy Spirit is now, the guide that knows the journey in our life and knows when it's time to, to get rid of some baggage that's not of God. And, and uh, you're not in charge. He is, but you have to also will for it to go. 
Yeah, so the spirit of truth in yeah. John chapter 16, the Holy Spirit, yeah. will expose the lies that live in your processing plant, the soul, will expose the, the truth will begin to expose the lie yeah. and force the lie out, yeah. which is part of the clearing of the temple we talked yeah. about last, that the water of the Word, of the Word of God, uh, how will they gain faith except it's preached? You're in the house, and the house, you will flourish if you start allowing the, you to be cleansed. I think, where does it say in Second Timothy that talks about uh, there in the house there is wood oh, and clay. Oh yeah, second. No, uh, yeah, I think it is second Timothy. Yeah, it is two twenty. Wood and clay and gold and, and silver. 21. So there's good in you, but there's also some bad in you. But if you'll cleanse yourself yeah. of it, you become ready for the works of Christ, yeah. uh, fully prepared for the goodness yeah. of God. Yes. So, so this is a whole process. That's what the water of the Word is to do: is to wash us and to cleanse us. Yes, yes, yes. And the Holy Spirit is there. And, you know, sometimes you're going around the same mountain or you can't seem to get to what God says is already yours. There's a blockage there. There's a mountain there. Yes. And so, and you have doubt and unbelief and you've prayed, you've seen, you act, you know. It, it's really important that you get to the bottom of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit why. And the, and the gifts of the Spirit, just when you surrender to that and you say Jesus is Lord and you surrender, the Holy Spirit is right there to show you the mountain, the situation, what it is, what you need to get free of, and so that you need to get rid of that in your life. Right now, I encourage you to open your heart and receive this. It's by faith that we're saved by faith through grace, mm -hmm. because grace means that all of it's been paid, and uh, it's, a, it's a process of being forgiven yes, and yes, receiving yes. the fullness of grace. Father God, I pray for those that are listening today that there is, there is a place in the heart that as they open their heart to receive truth, the mind says it sounds good, or the, it feels good, but now it's a submitted to the will. Will, will you receive this power of grace, which is the supreme power of God, between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the supreme power of God that flows to us, that has taken care of, past, present, and future, so that it puts us on a plane and a place of eternity. And you enter eternity in Christ Jesus for eternal with Father God. It is living out the best life right here on earth, as well as receiving all the good things of God right here on earth. We know we get them in heaven. So we just pray for you to receive the yes, revelation of grace really in your hearts. Really Holy Spirit, take it to them in Jesus' name right now, and they receive in the name of Jesus, and we'll give you praise and yeah. glory. Did you have something you want to share there? Yeah, Galatians chapter 3, 18 says this out of one translation. It says, uh, we receive all the promises because of the promised one, that's Christ Jesus, and not because we keep the law. It is not because of my human effort. It's because of, of Christ's effort that gave that to us and fulfilled the law. And God, and so How so we have to realize. Right and when we talk today, we really want to to bring you into that knowing that that through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus and His blood going into the holy of holies and sprinkling it on, uh, on the mercy seat seven times, made blood covenant with God. And in that blood, and when we got born again, we came into that oneness with Christ. He's the head, we're the body, and now we enter into his works and what he has done and uh, receiving that and that faith now propels us ahead so we understand that but then when you find that there that the, the curse is operating in your life or that there's a hindrance and you're not seeing what God says is yours. The Holy Spirit is right there. He's the guide to tell you, hey, there's some stuff over here that's blocking the way. Yes. And, that, and he's right there. The gifts flow in your life. And you say, okay, I don't want that. Take that out, that sin, and I renounce it. Let him clean your temple, the soul area. You know, of course, you're, you're the, where Christ lives is, is holy and godly, there's no sin. Sure. But there can be sin and, and garbage in your subconscious or, or in your body or situations, and the Holy Spirit has the power now to get rid that of that, clean that, up, uproot it. Like they say, you know, uh, 
you know, to get rid of that mountain, you say to that mountain, be gone, and it's gone, or, or that, that, uh, that sycamore tree, go in the name of Jesus. And so we see in that then, that we're able to then fill that area yes. up with the works of Christ, with the Holy Spirit, with the life of God, and uh, see yourself now receive the blessings of God. And that's the process that we go through. Yes. And, and we have to allow the Holy Spirit to be our counselor, to be our guide, to be our comforter, and let Him be the one. He presents the yeah. truth, and oh the God. knowing of the truth will set yeah. you free. Yeah, He's the intercessor that searches all things That's about it. us. That He's the one that tells us what God has freely given to us. He's the one that tells us what is yet to come. He is the, the, the counselor, the yes. guide, the advocate, Helper. the spirit of truth, the intercessor in our life, searching all things knowing mm. what God's Hidden plan and soul. purpose is of our life to reveal it to us. This is what God has for you. That's exactly and right. So Searching really, all of the hidden yes, things. That's yes. it. Bless God. Do you want to pray salvation? Yes, if you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus right now. God wishes none should perish, yep. but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. I prayed this at 27 years old and God changed my life. She prayed this at 25 years old, changed her yes. life. And we've been serving God ever, ever since, since. Yes. but not religiously. We've been serving by truth. I just challenge you with this. Pray this prayer with me, right? Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin and I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell somebody you received Jesus today, you'll never be the same. Praise God. And I really encourage you now as uh, you go to the Word for Winners, and discover what our mission is that God's called us to do is cover the earth with the word of grace to go to the nations yep. uh, with grace and truth to the churches there. And uh, so we are doing these things and we do support uh, orphanages and big world. ministries. And, and so uh, find out, discover us, uh, what we're doing. And if you feel God telling you to partner with us to accomplish God's mission, uh, uh, with this ministry on earth, we invite you to come in. If this has blessed you, we say, uh, be a part. And If you've uh, been blessed, be a blessing. That's right. And so we love you. God bless you. Are you ready to see more of the grace of God in your life? In the workbook, God's Grace Fuels My Passion, Dr. Maureen Anderson goes into an in-depth study of the life of grace and what that means. The law binds you, but grace brings you freedom. This book paints a picture of what grace truly is. Through personal testimonies, this is a life-changing revelation that God wants for you. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.